What is happening, my friends? What's goody? What's going on with you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another great episode of the Aaron and Gavin podcast. Uh, yeah, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you're tuning into this podcast. I'm just hyped the fact that I get to sit down and have another great conversation with you, my friends, listeners, the kind viewers out there that continue to support this podcast, coming to you with new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via podcast. So wherever you get your podcast from, whether it's iHeart, Spotify, Apple, look, you name it. Hey, all you got to do is just type in our smooth club media and you'll find us there. So you can listen to us 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and also 1 p.m. Uh, via uh, YouTube on our YouTube channel, our smooth club media. We are slowly but surely continue to grow with subscribers. We're not we're not on the high, high numbers yet, but hey. I see we, we we're growing and that's all that matters. Um, so again, you can check us out, subscribe to the channel, our smooth club media, um, our Facebook page. You can check us out at our smooth club podcast, as well as Twitter. Well, it's X formerly known as Twitter, uh, at rugged at our smooth club media. Yeah. At our smooth club media. There's so many platforms. Y'all. I'm trying to always remember it, but bear with me, bear with me. Um, yes. Happy Wednesday. I hope you all are having a great day. Um, what am I going to talk about? Oh, I'm excited because I got my bro, Nick, Mr. Nick Hammond Walters, host of Life Recreated Podcast, going to be on with me in a few short minutes. We're going to be chopping up about some some trending uh, stories and talked about conversations and topics because, you, as you know, here on this uh, show, uh, that's that's what I love to do. I You know, whatever is trending, I give you my unfiltered opinion on uh, those uh, uh, those stories, those topics and conversations. Uh, I'm also, uh, I'm honored to always bring on great individuals to this platform as guests, have great conversations with them, because on this show, what I always want to do is not just bring great content, y'all, but, you know, have fun and also inform, you know, I'll, we can have fun all the time, but what's the message being, you know, being shown? What's the message that, you know, we're spreading? I, I always say, look, I'm, I'm still a student. I'm no leader, but I hope that my actions, I hope that these conversations, I hope that these uh, uh, the guests that I bring on can help uplift and motivate and inspire and all everything above. Right. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned before, this man is no stranger to the Aaron Gavin podcast. He is my, my brother and good friend. He is the host of life recreated podcast. Mr. Nick Hammond wants, let me bring on Nick. Let me bring on Nick. Where, where's Nick at? Nick, how you doing, sir? What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. Look, how was, how was the holiday season, man? How was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was good, man. Got some time to rest, man. Relax. Um, spent some time with family, which was most important, bro. So it, it was good, man. I, I really, I needed it. I needed it. So <laughs> I, it, it was definitely good, man. Well, look, look, look I, I feel like the beard done got a little fuller since the last bro, time I saw hey, you there. That beard hey, looking I'm full now. That it's getting there. I got some grays <laughs> going on in there, but you know, it's good. I'm trying to get it down to like where you're at, like right down my middle chest. But oh, my oh, hair is this, not this, as nice. this take this takes time. This takes time. It's going. It's going. It's a patience <laughs> thing. It's, it takes time. But uh, it looks like you're using a great product. Did I mention yes, this sir. show is brought to you by Rugged Evolution Beer Care, ladies and gentlemen? Did I did I, did I mention that to you? Rugged is a new there smooth. Had, had yeah, to put yeah. that plug in there. Had to put that absolutely, plug in there. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah. man, no, I'm glad. I'm glad you and the fam had a great holiday and great Thanksgiving. It's always uh, uh I always have an awesome time when I get to sit back and talk to my friends and chop it up with you. Chop it up with you. And um, and man, you got a lot of great things happening for you. I I see uh you know success with Life Recreated podcast. Um, Thank you, bro. you have a a lot of great things happening in 2023 for you and your, you know, and your wife, Roberta. Uh, yeah. But, you know, 2024, man, for you, man, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great, man. Are you ready for the ride? Man, hey, look, I'm just there <laughs> for, I'm, I'm just along for it, man. I, I just want to keep the momentum going. Um, I'm grateful, grateful for all these opportunities. I'm just grateful to be in a space where I can, you know, do things and and uh, be a part of things that I actually want to do. So, so that that's what I'm really looking forward to, man. Being more intentional, being more specific on where I put my energy. So so I'm 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 looking for I'm ready for it, bro. I'm ready, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, look, we gonna we gonna bring up some 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 topics, man. That I've been checking out uh uh throughout the the week and throughout the holiday week, and I'm like, man, who I got I can't just talk about this solo because I I, I gotta have my man, Mister Mister Nick Hammond Walters, on to you know so I can get his thoughts on these two. The first, uh, the first story I'll bring up um, is uh, 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 about Deion Sanders, man. Deion Sanders, 
Uh, he's the current head football coach of uh, Colorado University of Colorado. As you know, Deion Sanders is by far one of the most popular athletes, former athletes of all time. I mean, he was a two-sport athlete, professional two-sport athlete, did about seven years in the major leagues and did 14 years, if I'm not mistaken, in the NFL, two Super Bowl uh, winning champ, Hall of Famer, uh, successful sports analyst, and uh, um, and successful uh, collegiate coach. Um, he did two years at Jackson State, uh, Jackson State University, HBCU. He, yeah. by far, I think, he he turned a lot of heads in H for HBCU sports. He really brought a lot of eyes and great exposure to HBCU um, athletics. Um, two winning seasons, back to back SWAC. Uh, uh, SWAC championships, and now he's uh, he's coaching uh, University of Colorado, which is a uh, uh, P, uh, PWI, pr predominantly white institution, mm -hmm. and um, and his season's not starting off so great, right? You know, I remember when he first had, uh, it was announced that he had left, he was leaving Jackson State, again, a winning program, right? It was nothing wrong, winning program for, uh, uh, in in a sense, a larger university, right? And that was coming off of a losing season, coming off of really bad losing season. So, uh, you know, he got a lot of heat. He got a lot of criticism. And of, I think most of that criticism was from his own people because it's like, OK, seeing that you're doing great stuff at an HBCU. Now, let's be honest. HBCUs don't pay good compared to PW, some P PWI universities yeah. um, at Dion's caliber. Dion is well worth millions of dollars and probably was making six figures i mean or or high six figures maybe a low million range might maybe right at a million um he installed a lot of his own money into the university and uh and so yeah he, he had opportunity he left and he's now at colorado so ever since he started at colorado i think nick a lot of people had said oh hey when that first loss comes we gonna dog him big time. Or when mm -hmm. you get that first win, you got the people that are gonna be like, "See, look at Dion. He already, you know." So Dion started the season off three and eight. I mean, excuse me, three and zero. Oh, excuse me, three, three and zero, oh, yeah. uh, undefeated season. So we're like, "All right, now you know, all right, Dion up to something." Now, with a lot of people that are probably not familiar with college uh, football, and maybe just in college sports in general, when they start the season off, they started off by playing lower caliber schools or lower rank. Uh, a university so that okay you 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 have a new squad you want to build up that confidence in the beginning of the season like majority of the time that first game the first game is going to be an easy win for a lot of for a lot of teams um mm -hmm. but uh uh you know they want to help they want to look start the season looking good so um you know he he played some schools had some great wins and uh but lately he's been having some bad losses some bad losses to so far in total I think his current uh, record uh, at Colorado is four and eight. Yeah. Um, it's four wins more than what they had before, but it's four and eight. And it's starting to put effect on his recruit, his recruiting process, because Deion Sanders is, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the games that he has lost, he has had some, some, Let's be honest, he's had some ass whoopings. He ain't had no loss. He had some ass whoopings. Like they were some bad, like high, high number, high scoring game uh losses. And so when you see games like that, that starts putting a head coach, a head coach's job on the line. Cause they're like, oh man, that is, you know, that's ugh, that's that's we can't be losing like that, man. You represent the university. We we can't be we can't be having these losses. So now that he's had a few of those, and like I said, it has he hasn't been winning a lot of games lately. He's right now four and eight. Um, it's not helping him recruit, you know, up and coming high school prospect athletes to his you know to his um uh to his uh, university to his uh, football program. So now people are questioning, okay, what's going to be Deion Sanders? Uh uh um, I don't know his time in Colorado. Um. I want to ask you, Nick. Have you have you been tuning into um uh you know Colorado football this past uh, season at all by any chance? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Because I mean, I grew up as a Dion fan. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up watching him. I'm 41, so I remember watching him play like prime time. Play like I had Dion Sanders sneakers, bro. When his Dion's came out, 
I had those sneakers, right? So, I mean, I've I've been watching Dion for for years, and and you know, I, I think that this situation that we're seeing right now, number one, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know what I mean? Like we knew he was gonna come out the gate, and we knew he was gonna be prime time, right? He mm-hmm. Dion doesn't do ever since I remember growing up watching him, he doesn't do anything just you know what I'm saying, like nonchalant or basic. You know what I mean? Like everything with Dion is going to be flashy. It's going to be prime time. It's going to be, it's going to be up there. Um, I think, I think the difference back then is, you know, when you look at what Dion was bringing to the field, whether it was football or baseball, that was mm-hmm. relying on his work ethic, his talent, his ability, all those different things. And so we put a lot of weight on that and we say, okay, well, yeah, we, we know Dion can perform. And then he comes to Colorado and he was performing. He still is performing. Yeah. But then it's like we got the whole rest of the team that we got to look at because, I mean, the coach winning the game is only a small portion of that that actually happening. You know what I'm saying? Like that, it really – and not saying that I'm down in the players or anything like that, but, I mean, we just got to look at look, look at the reality of it, right, is that he's a yeah. coach. He could be a good coach, but that's only going to really take them so far, right? So – and and. And see, and you make some awesome points because, see, I was more critical with Dion, not the fact that he chose to go for a higher wage, because I'll be honest, I'm a whore for money. You get you give me some million. Yeah. What? Let me That's tell you something. Thing, I, yeah. I am yeah. getting I'm getting paid. OK, look, at the end yeah. of the day, he initially signed a three year contract. He signed a three year contract. And in that three years, he was paid to. To elevate, to rebuild, to you know, build up a football program. Jackson State was losing. They were a losing program before he came there. So mm-hmm. in his two years, he had two undefeated seasons, back-to-back yeah. SWAC championships. I mean, they had renovations out the yin-yang. They brought so many c- celebrities to the air. So much exposure was to, at Jackson State. So what he did was he started a blueprint. It was not his. It's not his role to continue to uplift all of HBCUs and, you know, to that whole sports program. It's up to alumni to do that. It's not up to one person. And a lot of people hate when I always kind of say that. But when it comes to like, you know, if you want to see some uh, 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 big things happening at at HBCUs, I'm sorry, but I got to criticize the alumni because it, the HBCUs all over are hurting financially compared to PWIs. And it shouldn't be that because successful people has, has graduated from uh, uh, HBCUs. Um, yeah. there's millionaires that will donate to PWIs that's not even didn't even go to that school. They just yeah. like the school. So they, right. they donate money. So it's all about alumni to install and pour into your uh to your universities. Um Dion Dion said what he was gonna do. He 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 gave you back to back winning championships, renovations. What else was he there to do? So okay, boom. He moves on to a higher to a higher program for for higher wages. I wouldn't say higher program, but higher wages. Now, the reason why I was critical with Dion, because me personally, yeah, if I'm winning, why stop? You know, let I want to continue to have more and more and more undefeated seasons. If I if I, if my whole goal is to be a good Dion after is Dion after just winning, or is Dion that, after it, a challenge? Right? Because you remember now, this is the same guy we're talking about that played. Football and then the same. It, it, I think it was the same day or same week. Went and played baseball. Man, like the same, main, the same day, the same, same day. day. Like who does that, bro? Who plays a football game, an like NFL football game, and says, "Oh, I'm gonna go play a bit." He's not doing that because he wants to win. He's doing that because yeah. in his mind, he's like, "I just want to see if I could do it." And so that's, that's the that thing. Is, that is smart. That I mean, that is that is true as far as like the challenge. I just, I, I, I guess. Dion has always been prime time. So like you said, that has been his his brand since we started knowing who Dion was was a challenge. He he you know, he he was a punt returner. He was, you know, he was a record holding punt returner. He always wanted to get that big, but he always been about the money too. He's always yeah. been saying I'm a, I'm going to get I'm going to get that high money cuz I'm about that paper. So I think at the end of the day that hasn't left Dion. I just if I'm if I'm winning, you know, person if I'm a, if I'm winning and why leave a winning program like that's for me it's like why that's like bill belichick saying well 
we done won if he still had if he still had the same squad. We were already won yeah three Super Bowls in a row. Nah, I'm gonna go somewhere else and you know and leave. You know, probably the greatest quarterback of all time. Leave the great. You know, he no. Nah, that man said, "I'm gonna stay here until the wheels fall off." And really, for the New England Patriots sidebar, the the wheels have been falling off. They're they're yeah, 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 they, they've been falling. Yeah, they, <laughs> but, they're but off. I mean, but but, you know, but give, I think Bill Belichick just wanted to be. I feel like it's like a, a comfort thing, right? So if you are mm-hmm. winning, I mean, we all love to win, but at some point, it's like, all right, I I can only win so much. You know what I mean? Like if you using that example, if I won the Super Bowl three times in a row, like what else am I really doing after that? Like there's what, you know what I'm saying? Like what, what am I supposed to, what's the next thing? Like, I feel like when you think about men, we are, we're always trying to evolve. We're always trying to like, okay, how can mm. I take something and grow and build on that? Like, that's what the, I feel like the essence of being a man is like taking something, Speak on it. Speak. Look, let him no, use no, my hands. Let, let him use it. Yeah, I just got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, y'all, it's, yeah, it's yeah. it's not a joke. I'm messing with Nick, but no, Nick, you speak. You're speaking facts though, because now you're yeah. you're pulling you're pulling out something that I never even thought of. That the essence of being a man is the fact that we always are up for it. We always try to challenge ourselves because it's always about growth, right? Any individual is always, what can I do to continue to help my growth as a person, yeah. and like you said, the essence of man is always to be challenged. Now, it's funny because I might be the opposite. I, my wife always gets on me because I'm always pre- uh, preaching this in the household. Uh, uh, work smarter, not harder. Yeah, I am an advocate for work smarter, not harder. If I could, I'm not the best. I'm not the best cook in my uh, in in the household at all. Uh, when it's time for me to, if I'm in charge for dinner. Best believe Arrington's gonna be getting some really good takeout because why <laughs> it's smarter, not harder. Not why harder, why yeah. struggle try and figure out a recipe when I could just get something, you know? So, but but I I you speak you're speaking nothing but facts with that with that uh um message as far as okay, you know, with Dion, with the S of men, you know, he's always gonna continue to want wanting to pursue a challenge, and that's what he's doing right now. And I think I think uh, uh, what the results will be, I don't think he will get fired after this season. I mean, Deion signed a very, very great contract. But one thing about college football, if, I don't know if you've heard about the, you know, Jimbo Fisher from Texas A&M. He, you know, he got fired and yeah. his buyout was like $76 million. million because bro, he was getting paid bank. Yeah. I mean, he, but let me he, ask you this question now. Would uh-huh. this be the same conversation if Deion Sanders was white? Ooh, no. Um, well, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. No. <laughs> uh, but the but I think <laughs> but I think it's different with Dion because Deion Sanders is Deion Sanders. Like if Deion, <laughs> I mean, if like I'm just I'm gonna be honest, there is no other college football player that has Deion Sanders popularity no. at all. So I no. think Deion Sanders' popularity might continue to save his his job position because i mean best believe if if i don't know if uh 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 let me see let me see let me see um i am losing his well okay I, I, well oh man i'm trying to remember his name to save my life um he's the coach of jets and the chiefs and he was a uh he just he got fired coaching arizona state um arizona state i believe it was Oh, the there I, I I can't remember his name to save my life, but um, that individual was a he was a um a former NFL coach. Then he was a You're talking sport. about Herm Edwards. Herm Edwards, yes, Herm Edwards. Yeah. So Herm had got fired, but Herm, I think his stay was his stay was extended probably longer than expected because of his you know just his popularity. Because hey, look, this is a you know a former NFL coach, head coach, um, former NFL player. And then also a sports analyst from ESPN who was on there for a long time. So um, now his popularity is nowhere near to Deion Sanders. But I do think that the University of Colorado sees the attention that Deion Sanders can bring to a university. Um, He's he's they always haven't sold out like their, their season tickets are done. Like there's no getting a ticket to a home game. Celebrities galore are popping in to see Deion. So it was one it was one time I think this was in the beginning of the season there were six national 
uh known televised shows that was in attendance in Colorado at University of Colorado. 60 Minutes was there, College Game Day was there. Uh um there were like I think two other shows that was recorded there to interview Deion Sanders. I think First Take was out there. Everybody was out there. So Dion has those relationships and he brings that attention there. But I do think eventually Colorado's not going to want to lose all the time either. I mean, that's just yeah. that's just the, the God on a truth. Like they can say, okay, look, we're losing, but we got Hall of Fame Deion Sanders here. Nah, you want to you want to win. You you definitely yeah. want to win. But um, I do think that if Dion was white, and it's and it's sad to say, and it's not me being anywhere. You know, it's not racist to say I think it's more privileged for uh, uh, white head coaches than black uh, head coaches. I mean, let's be honest. Um, in the NFL, there's not a lot of black head coaches. Uh, the NBA, now they, they've done a great job. I think they got like over 10 uh, African-American head coaches. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just when it comes to higher positions – there's not a lot of opportunity for uh men of color. Um, and that's just I mean, that's just that's that's life, that's reality, that's the world we live in right now. And it sucks because when majority of the, the top players in that league are African Americans, wouldn't you expect one of those guys to be great coaches? But that's just me. That's just me. That's, um that's the question. That is it, the question. It sure right is, man. Man, look, I'm gonna uh uh moving on to uh, uh to another uh convo man and uh, uh, we have spoke about this uh, before the show. Uh, you know, Diddy, Sean Diddy Combs, right? So Sean Diddy Combs has stepped down as chairman of Revolt. Now, as you know, Revolt is a streaming service that uh, he was a part of it that he owned. Um, Revolt has loads of great uh content shows, shows like uh the podcast Drink Champs. Uh, um, um, I, I, I there's a few other ones I'm trying to remember, but. Um, I know Drink Champs because that's the one I always like to tune into. But did he step aside as chairman because there has been a lot of allegations, um, full stemming after you know sexual assault allegations. So as you know, a while back, uh, his former girlfriend Cassie, um, she had uh made the allegations of uh, like sex trafficking, rape, sexual assault, and abuse uh, that Diddy had uh, uh that Diddy had done to her, and so. Since then, they have settled for about $30 million. Now, I have mixed views on that one, but they have settled. And after that, there has been two more other allegations brought to uh, Diddy. And because all these accusations, this the stem of this lawsuit, he's like, let me step aside from Revolt. Um, Revolt, I, I was actually listening to this on the radio earlier today, um, a a host on revolt a female who's a survivor of sexual assault she had said that she's resigning from her position because if diddy is at, at in charge of here i don't want to be a part of this um even though this is allegations right this is allegations but i will say after paying cassie with the settlement makes him look very guilty but in a sense i don't think it helps cassie's story as well because you, you it's it's and and not, I'm not saying Diddy's innocent at all. I'm just saying you're always going to be innocent until proven guilty, but it doesn't look good when you have to pay a settlement because the innocent man will not pay anybody because you're like, wait a minute, I didn't do anything. What do I need to pay, right? But uh, the fact that he paid and very quickly he paid uh, doesn't look good on Diddy's side. Yeah. Um, shame on his PR people, whoever was representing him, because at the end of the day, they you have to know how guilty that makes you look um if you if he easily would have said hey those are false accusations uh that's not true it might have you know it might have would have protected his, his brand somewhat cuz allegations are always going to put a dent in your in your career for in 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 my view i feel like it'll put a dent if 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 he was innocent the whole 9 yards but it was three women that said uh i had sexual assault that's a dent anybody brings that up it's it's it puts a dent in your career. Um, Nick, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? When you first heard about, I'll start for the first allegation. When you first heard about Diddy, what was your, give me your thoughts. I want Nick Harmon Walters <laughs> initial thoughts on this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when I first heard that come out, I, you know, 
I knew that there was probably some truth to it. I've I've never really been a big Diddy fan. I think he's always been like way too over the top, like just way too. I've seen, you know, I remember seeing videos from back in the day of him like spazzing out, throwing stuff in the in the in the office and just acting like a little kid. And, you know, so just, you know, his 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 approach to his approach to 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 how he presents himself and the things that he wants and the things that he desires i felt like was a little bit always over the top um mm -hmm. for me i mean the reality of like i think a lot of times men in those situations that are hot you know i think kevin samuels used to talk about this i don't know if you remember if I, like watching mm -hmm. kevin he would talk about these high value men right so men that are these high earning high figure men and and i think part of the you know the issue and just then this is in my perspective my observation right mm -hmm. you know i think sometimes when when some of these guys get like the kind of money that they have and the type of um resources and power that they have like a lot of times when that stuff is not checked because like you know, we're looking at this now. And we're saying, oh, like Diddy's doing this. Well, Diddy was doing this when Diddy was probably broke and just coming up like mm -hmm. this. Ain't, this is probably not new. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. but back then, nobody could say anything about it because we didn't have the media like we have now. We didn't have the access. And even with all of these allegations that are coming out, I remember reading something because I was like, man, why is it just coming out now? Yeah. And yeah. I was reading somewhere where it was saying that in uh, I think in New York, there was an expiration date for when if people wanted to file certain lawsuits and not have any kind of like re re repercussion or something, something along those lines. There was like this cutoff date where yeah. people had to like file some type of suit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff that we're seeing, I don't think this is like new. Like this is stuff that dudes have been they've been doing this for years. Right. They've been taking advantage of people like this for years. Um, and you know, for him to settle and especially for that much, Whew. it's kind of like, it's kind of like, and, but then on the flip side, I don't really think that that makes up for how he treated her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, you got 30 mil, but now you got to deal with like the trauma and all the, the different things that you have to go through because of, of his, you know what I'm saying? Like his issues. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I I don't know. I I don't I don't really agree with like the settlement part of it because you're not. What do you really like? He's not learning his lesson on that. Right? Well, and yeah, and, that, and that's the and that's the thing. Like, and I'm going to cut you off, but the the fact that, to my knowledge and what I've read, I believe Cassie and her team had, oh, they basically had until the end of the week to ch to basically make a criminal like to to yeah. file a criminal charge. Yeah, and she did not. She ended up satisfied Seven. she was satisfied with the 30 30 million and again 30 million is not gonna take away the harm yeah you know away so in a sense like that why accept why take the money that's that's my mixed views on that whole between cassie and uh and diddy when and 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 i'll be i'll be biased i'm a diddy fan business wise you know of course diddy has some bobs i, I was i'm i was a diddy fan whenever to when i grew up watching diddy he was always a guy on his social media, you know, partying with his kids, partying, whatever, you know. Hey, look, I didn't see the early, you know, the early, 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 you know, era yeah. of, of Diddy. Yeah. Um, Like you mentioned, before Diddy had money, he was probably acting like this before he was broke. But the fact of the matter is, you know, he has he has eyes always looking on him now compared to when he was wasn't Diddy, when he wasn't puffy, all that stuff. Yeah. So so much attention is being brought to him Um, again. For him to pay says a lot, uh, and and that it doesn't look good on his on his behalf to be like, okay, you paid thirty million, and that's a lot of money. Even though you you're a man that has a lot of wealth, but to pay thirty million is a guilty person to to me. Yeah, but what it what what is really thirty million to Diddy? I mean, Diddy ain't make no new songs in a while. Did now Diddy has residual income? No, he. I mean, he's up he's up there he's up there. I I mean, but again, but again. Diddy was a broke man before he was a rich man. I guarantee you, thirty million is a still thirty million out of his pocket. And again, I think it's different if if he spent thirty million on a home, then it's nothing. But the fact that he's spending thirty million to 
basically keep a girl quiet from saying too much. Like that's a hard shot in the gut for Diddy, in my in my opinion. You you, you see what I'm saying? I, I don't know if I agree with that though, because that's my thing. It's like because when you look at his, and I don't know his net worth, I don't know his mm-hmm. overall net worth, but you know, if we were to look at now, like, first off, I don't think, and I don't know how it works, but I would mm-hmm. assume that they're not paying her 30 million right off the bat, right? Okay. This is going to be broken down. It's probably going to be like, it's probably, they, they may have settled, right? Cause I don't think it's no, I, 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 and I don't know how that works, but I'm just thinking like, it was probably not like a, okay, we just wire transferred you 30 million. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it was probably like broken down over time whatever the case may <laughs> I be i pay i pay i pay it i pay it one million a day and then the, tomorrow i get you to written that's what i'm saying yeah because if you look at the business industry i just saw um an interview he had with sting sting um where he he uh did he pays him like two thousand dollars a day oh sting from uh that. sting in the police huh? no <laughs> no sting no, sting, no. sting in the police sting the lead singer sting, oh yeah, singer. yeah 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 okay gotcha, 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 yeah yeah so you know like so that's too you know like so that's broken down over time so you know, like when I look at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, he's paying 30 mil. I mean, to us, that it's would a, be it's a, it's a huge, huge hit. Yeah. But I'm like, in the grand scheme, I mean, he owns Ciroc, like you said, Revolt. He's got hands in all these different things. You know, like his net worth is probably through the roof. I'm, so far. I just I just looked at it. So in 2022, they said his estimate, and this was a uh, Fortune magazine listed combs uh, okay uh let's see his estimate was a net worth of right at one billion in 2022 so that which might've... is which is probably under what he uh, really yeah, worth. Which, yeah so there there's some saying um 900 million they're saying in some in some years he's earned 130 million in just a year of things in just so, a year yeah in just yeah. one year bro so think about it. that's one year he earned 130 million well 30 of that gone 30 of that yeah. gone. <laughs> but then here's the other thing. That's 130 million that we that the government knows about. Yes, yes, yes. Right? It's it sounds like you just don't like Diddy uh uh Nick and you're no. saying <laughs> no. the government don't know I, about that, but I know that motherfucker. Look, I'm just I'm just I'm just like looking at because and the reason I say that is because I remember I remember um <laughs> I was watching Dave Ramsey once, right? And mm-hmm. they were talking, mm-hmm. there was a big thing that was going around, and it was Jay-Z. And he had went out with a couple of his homeboys and the bill was like a hundred thousand dollars or something. And they were like, how could you spend a hundred thousand dollars going out and partying? And and you're like, yeah, but if you look at how much a hundred thousand is to his overall net worth, worth, that's like you and I going out and maybe dropping a grand like partying. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's very minuscule. So I'm looking at Diddy and I'm like, okay, if you're telling me he's worth 1 billion, 30 million 30 is million. like, yeah, that's not, I don't even think that. And I think that's the problem with our system because it's like, okay, you're going to settle for 30 million. This girl, we ain't heard of Cassie in a minute. Yeah. Right. Where's she been at? What? So in these but situations, I think, the, I think the counter that Nick though, it's like, let's go to the pride thing though. Yeah. That's an L in my book. Like, I don't care if I have a hundred billion, if yeah. I'm, if someone comes out making I'm going to just say, if okay, someone came out making accusations to me, and I'm not saying this is false or if it's true with, with Diddy. Like I said, this separate. But say, okay, this, making false accusations, but I'm just going to pay them to shut up? No, that's, a, you know, if it's not true, it's not true. So right. I'm not giving them jack squat. So I just think that it's a L, it's still a, it's a L on Diddy. It's a win for Cassie. But, you know, to, I guess, to most men or to a good majority of the men in America, they're probably like saying, oh, you know, gold digger just getting some money. You know, right? Then I mean, it, that's I mean, that's a good a good portion of them are saying, well, is, is it a civil or is it a criminal law? Oh, civil. They just trying to get some money now. For a lot of women, they're like, yes, girls. You know, speak out, speak out, because now there's more women coming. Because that's what happens when there's one person that comes out public. Okay, a slew of them will come because they're like, okay, it's difficult for somebody to come after somebody with so much power because diddy has a lot of power and i do think that's why cassie why these other individuals that came out were quiet because you know there's a lot of public figures that are you know you know getting these receiving these lawsuits of sexual assault and it's like people always say well why so long why so long well when you're like (laughs) you know if you want to make a lawsuit against a person that literally can by the 
press of a button or by the snap of the fingers can, you know, can do stuff like, yeah, you're going to be hesitant saying stuff. You don't know how people are going to react. Diddy has a fan base, this and that and the other. So it's difficult. Uh, but what were you about to say? I was going to say, but then also think about what he is being accused of. He's being accused of rape. In my opinion, rape is one of the most violating things yeah, that you yeah. can do to a woman, right? You non-consensually yeah. are crossing that line. Yeah. There's nothing more private and there's nothing more precious than a woman's, her sexuality and her purity when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So for a man to take that, right? You got to mm -hmm. think like if if you if you, let's flip it like uh, I know a lot of men are like oh she's a gold digger look if if you as a dude got raped right you're gonna be like yo wait wait a second like you just violated a whole bunch of lines that I don't really know how to I don't know how to like you know what I'm saying like how yeah, do you yeah. like if if this person was strong enough to take the most precious thing from me. Mm -hmm. right and nobody mm -hmm. stopped them nobody protected me nobody like you know what i'm saying so in that moment it's like man if this had if he's got that much power that he could just take this from me well it kind of makes sense sometimes for a person that's been violated like that to mm -hmm. say well i'm not going to say anything about it and you know for a lot of us guys like we have to really be conscious of that you know like me and my wife were just talking about that sometimes as men we kind of come off and we do these things not realizing Yo, we're we're sending all the we don't know what this woman's gone through, the red yeah. flags that are going yeah. off. And so man, there's a lot of safety issues in just that because a man has taken the most well, and I think it, and you, you bring up a good point. And I think it's it's hard, it's uh, for one, it's much harder for women because you know, that whole song, you know, the whole song, this is a man's, you know, this is a man's world. When women speak out, women are easily ignored. Right. Yeah. And then when if a man is if a man is raped, a man's not going to talk about that because they're like, you know, now, how are the men going to look at me about my toughness? Right. How about that's done? Yeah. That's that a, happened to Terry Crews. Remember that? That happened to Terry Crews where he got groped yeah, and all that but stuff. And everybody was like, ah, you know, I ain't gonna lie to, I, I, <laughs> first of all, Terry Crews is 280 pounds of muscle. Yeah, he's a big and it's, boy. But 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 in the, in his in his case, though, because Terry got heat on that one, man, he was getting joked out the man. But in Terry's situation, though. It was an abuse of power thing because Terry was an up and coming actor. He was he was in some films, but he never had big roles, right? Yeah. So that man was like probably his ticket to hitting that level. So Terry is like, yeah, I could have cracked this dude's jaw open if I wanted to, but I'm trying to succeed. I'm trying to build. So it's it was very hard for 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 Terry Crews to you know come out you know, but he said it. He said it once he was pretty established. Now, um. You know, again, Cassie hasn't. Cassie only made I, I know of one album. I don't even know too many Cassie songs, but because she was more, I think, popular of being the girlfriend of Diddy. Um, now the question now will be for Diddy: What is gonna be next for him? How is this gonna affect his brand? How is this going to uh affect like all his ventures? Right? Because I mean. Let's be honest, Ciroc was only uh, uh popular because it was Diddy's liquor. Like, Diddy has all this. Vodka is disgusting, okay? I don't care if y'all are vodka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if y'all yeah. are listeners of this show and y'all like vodka, shame on you. <laughs> vodka <laughs> is disgusting, okay? No, yeah, yeah. I bought I bought Ciroc just because I'm like, oh, this is Diddy stuff. Like, I mean, now yeah. I'll give it to him. The 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 He has a Ciroc brandy uh out. It's nice. I like it. Uh, it's a, it's a cognac. It's not bad or in tequila, but um, you know, it's just it's it's hard. It's hard. And I and don't um, please. I don't want people that are tuning into this show thinking I'm in support of Diddy right now. We don't we don't know. In all honesty, we don't know if, as far as for these other two cases. Now we've already talked about uh the first one has been settled. We sh we shared our thoughts on that. But as far as as far as for these other two, it's just. Diddy is, is not is not looking good for him. The fact that he's stepping aside from jobs, the fact that certain brands are saying, uh, I'm going to kind of prevent him from being the face of this. Like, I think his tequila, De Leon, he hasn't been the face for De Leon because of this, uh, because of these cases, uh, because Diddy is not the solo owner of these ventures. He has partners. He has there's other superior people and boards that are like, oh, Diddy, you might need to sit. 
sit it back until this is you know yeah, but, this is over. but then here's the thing though bro even though he steps down from these situations or these these certain roles and these different positions it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that he don't still have the power to be doing all the stuff behind the scenes we can't really think for one second that a man with that type of power and those type of resources is just gonna say all right i screwed up let me just take the back roll and not do anything like you follow what I'm saying? Like he's still making these moves. So, the so in a, so in a sense, then what will be the justice? What, 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 that's what my is qu- justice? That's yeah. my question, and I think that's the problem with the system is that okay, this woman was violated, right? She was mm-hmm. taken advantage of. I, I mean, I think she was she was a student. They were she was a student at Syracuse University, bro. She was oh, 18, and and it was and it was another. It was, that's the one that um. I believe Aaron Hall from the group guy, his name was mentioned into that into that case. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I, there was a um, and I'm and I might I might be, I don't know. I'm pretty sure there was there was there's a case where his name was flown around in the in the in the story. And um, oh yeah yeah here you go Aaron Hall. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Hall turns turns rape in um yeah at, at Hall's apartment sometime between 1990 and 1991. Right. So so that's my thing is that, you know, I think the problem that that we have now is that um, when, when it comes to holding people accountable for mm-hmm. certain things and certain crimes, like I don't think that our justice system does a good job at doing that. Right. Because let's say if we were in some other country and you rape a woman like they're chopping off your dingling. Like they're like, no, nah, you don't do that, bro. Like, you you know what I'm saying? You don't you don't. Damn, you Nick, don't, you have. Ow, ow, you see, <laughs> wow, wow, this show took a left turn. On, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, but 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 in a sense, I feel like there is more integrity when it comes to holding him accountable, because here's the thing. You know, like I think about some of the times we have situations that happen, like the first thing came to my mind, and this is not like a, a you know, like a rape thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, you think about like Travis Scott, like all those mm-hmm. people died at the at the at the, the at his concert. Uh-huh. He went mm-hmm. quiet for a little bit. And now he's and back, then, too. and now he's back, and now he's got a top selling. And it's like, wait a second, hold up, like we we forgot, like that all well, of these people lost their lives. You know what well, I'm saying? Well, I think. Well, here's the thing, though. I think that's not uh, well for him. That's not a justice uh, system thing. That's on the fact that Travis has fans that are gonna love him regardless. So, which is the same issue with Diddy. Well, but Cassie received. Well, she she agreed. To the settlement. So again, if she had the opportunity, if her team and her, all of her, if they had the opportunity to file a criminal charge, then again, why not do it in a sense of where is it? You know what I mean? Like at that at that level, that ball that ball is in her in their hands. That okay, ball, well then here's a flip this on that though. Mm-hmm. If she were to have pursued that, could she mm-hmm. have a? Could she be able to afford to take that all away? Like if she if they if he was like okay I'm not gonna settle, I want to take you all the way to court. Could she afford to do that? Because you know okay. he got low. true, true, true. Anytime you're in that, come on, man. I mean, like, look. But but here's the thing. But here's the thing, though. I and 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 I might be a little not not well not biased, but there are there are some judges that when a story is getting promoted a lot in the limelight the judge the jury the judge is almost and they're not biased based on what they continue to see but i i think i think a great attorney and the type of case this is it could still she might can't afford it but i don't know it could still it's still worth fighting for i think not I think, in a sense, not fighting for it will be because let's be honest, the Me Too movement is undefeated. The Me Too movement is an organization that is always going to help out victims in need. So, if say, for example, if she does, if she can't afford it, maybe organization will say, you know what, we're gonna raise money so that you can take this. I mean, seriously, we're in. A, I feel like we're in a different time where you it's. Uh, you know I'm trying. You know you see what I'm trying to go with Nick. It's like yeah, it's yeah. like I'm 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 trying I'm trying to get the, get the right wordings out. In a sense like that, if she can't afford it, 
there are so many organizations, but I just I'm thinking of the Me Too movement because the Me Too movement was like the one of the biggest ones. Yeah. One of the biggest ones. Again, I still feel though she could it's still worth fighting for, is what I'm saying. If if you're not worth fighting the good fight because you know this is something that's probably happened to other people and to just say, well, I'll settle for money. I mean, again, you are just letting him roam free in a sense. I mean, yeah. that's I mean, that's kind of how that how that rolls it. Uh I don't know. I don't know. But you make you make a great point though, because Cassie, again, Cassie don't have Diddy money. And so let's be let's be honest we've seen criminals get off with the right attorneys man i ain't gonna i ain't gonna talk about the dream team back in the 90s because you know you got some people that still think he innocent but hey that's it you know what i mean and then you think about it there's i mean they rap about it right yeah the first i remember hearing jay-z say look i got lawyers like shooters right like i got like we have lawyers lined up that we know you know what i'm saying and 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 I think that's kind of part of the dilemma. I think even, you know, like in our culture, I think we we realized and, and some, you know, a lot of folks have realized, OK, you know, if we go back to the whole black and white thing on this, yeah. you know, we, we 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 brought somebody in the office that we knew was harassing women. Absolutely. And violent, Absolutely. Had on tape, right. Like. And and it's like okay, but we and still... that was before his ass got elected. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? And, it's and like, he got right? elected and became president. <laughs> he became the dang president. And I'm like, how did you? How, how how does this happen? Where our justice system won't protect? You know, it, when I look at like even in my in my job, I go into some of these places where I'm helping people, and I'm like, and a lot of it are are female, like there's women, and I'm like, why is our justice system? not protecting our women like that and i think in a situation like this when they do settle right Mm. i go back to like okay would she have been able to afford this would she have gotten the back and would she have really had justice served Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying with our current system i don't know if she would have if she would have tried to fight it so and then and then going back to like okay well him settling all you're just saying is that all right, I'm gonna just give you this money so you can just be quiet. It's like, no, bro, you you took something that wasn't yours. Mm-hmm. Like, there's mm-hmm. got to be a consequence to that because there's always mm-hmm. a consequence to that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So that that's it's, my thing. We def we definitely have to continue this uh, conversation, Nick, because I know it's definitely it. I, I have more thoughts, but I wanna I wanna move on to our final uh uh, uh topic, man. But um, I got definitely want to continue this conversation because it, it's it's a passionate one. Because I'm not gonna I'm a yeah. mama's boy. I and love, I have a daughter. I, I got a daughter. And, yeah, now. you have a, you have a daughter. Exactly. So it's yeah. like it's it's a whole different you you get a, you receive a different mindset because and before before I end off you know this convo, you're absolutely right as far as for you know what is what is the system what is society how how are we protecting our queens out here? That's really yeah. the all the all around like thing is how how do we how are we protecting our queens? Because when it's a sense like this, it's like there is no justice. And maybe it, you could throw in, okay, are there? Is is it a matter on the number of females we have on the in the uh, uh, as judges, right? Because if you have an old, you know, an old guy in 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 the court, what is he? You yeah. know what I mean? It's like everybody, they're, they're even though they oh they're they're uh, uh uh um let me see, they're always on the law side, right? They're always on the law side, but internally do they they don't know what it is to be a female right so you can say that you can say okay does uh uh you know does cassie need to be represented or does these females need to be represented by female attorneys so they can really get it you know it's just it's so much thought process of like how is or also man we live in a greedy society man money's over everything so is there some under is there some under the table you know pay payouts going on right so it's 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 a lot to be discussed with that um but you know for right now i i I would say i don't think it's looking too sharp for diddy yeah he's still a successful man yeah he still got paper yeah he still got his you know he can do whatever he wants but um you know at the end of the day it's like i said me too movement is undefeated so if, if if more women continues to uh you know come out and um, and it actually has been a loads of other stories involving different public figures or sexual assault allegations. Are we is this going to be the start of 2024? We don't know, but hey, we will continue to stay tuned to it and you know chop it up here 
on the show. Uh, Nick, last one I want to talk about, man. I'm really excited to talk about this story. Andre 3000. My actor, boy. Actor, musician, flutist. I don't know if that's really a word, but flute master. <laughs> the, flute, yeah. the flute man. <laughs> uh, member of Outkast, man. One of the one of some of the all-time great hip-hop groups um, and really just musical groups of all times. Um, you know, he has a new album out, a new solo album, and it's not an album of him, you know, spitting rhymes. It's him playing a flute. He's playing a flute, man. He's playing a it. flute. I love that album. Now, I, I was to say, Nick Star, I haven't tuned in. How is the album? I love the album, bro. I love the album. I love it. I, I, I listen to a lot of music without words anyway. So <laughs> it wasn't like, you know, it, it didn't shock me at all. Um, But but I just love the fact that I've always loved Andre. I've always loved Out. I grew up on Outkast. I mean, mm. I'm from Florida. So like Atlanta's right there. So. I mean, I've always, whatever Andre came out with, whatever, you know, Big Boy came out with, I was going to support it because they have stood, I mean, they've been around for decades and they've been consistent. Very you know, consistent. here's the thing. We're knocking, we're knocking, we're knocking Andre, people, a lot of people were knocking Andre's album, but Andre had one of the hottest verses, I think, in 2023 let, on let, the let. Killer Mike album. Um, scientists and engineers, man. Let's pull it up. Hold on, let me try and pull this up real quick. Uh, there we, there we go. go. Look, look at that, y'all. Look, I mean, look at that. In the first week, in the first week, he has look at the look at that. I mean, Nas, Logic, Lil J. I don't know who some of these people are. Ice, Spy, Lil Wayne, Macklemore. I ain't know Macklemore was still making music. Uh, <laughs> French Montana. I mean, all of these people. We're making look. This is streams off of their uh, uh off of them using words. This man yeah. used an instrument, a whole there album, an instrument. That's it. And I'm gonna tell you why it's so dope because when they first when this first came out, uh uh Andre 3000 was interviewed and the man said, "Why not make an album about you know just a new album involving like you know you rapping?" Right? Andre said, "Look, I'm 48 years old. 40 for 48 years old. What am I gonna rap about?" He said, "You know." I done did. I done, what am I gonna rap about? I can't, yeah. you know. And it, 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 it really. I was happy when he said that because, in a sense, he's like, okay, artists, especially in hip hop, he's he. What he just did, in my opinion, was say there is a stigma of hip of, of rappers. Like you gotta talk about you partying the club, you yeah. you know, you getting that money, you you know, you getting all the ladies, blase blase blah. He's like, no, I'm old. I I don't need to rap about that, and I don't have anything to rap about so boom let me make this i thought it was i thought it was pretty dope because you you like i remember seeing a uh and i'm a huge charlie wilson fan and charlie wilson's not a rapper but in a, in like a charlie wilson music video he's at the club checking out this guy like charlie ain't you about 70 what you what you out there in the club for charlie <laughs> yeah. uncle yeah. charlie sit down you're tired so it's like <laughs> yeah he, he is so is so talented because now and I saw another post. Somebody said, "Well, it's good to see a rap a, front, a rapper on the front cover holding an instrument and not a gun." And I was yeah. like, "Whoa, whoa, that's that's deep right there." Because you know, again, there's and I and I and I won't compare that to all hip hop artists, but to some other people, hip hop genre and you know, rapping it can you know it can evolve like you know some hardcore like you know, boom, this that that this and that. you know, it, nothing that's positive to like youth or to the you know to the um you know to the the uh, people right to the community but i think this is something very positive i think he's gonna start really changing the narrative in hip-hop because he's like okay um i i i can rap but i also taking up flute lessons and i'm pretty damn good at it so i'm gonna make an album out of it. i mean it's just it's interesting man it's, it's really interesting and i think andre is a uh, uh i mean hey he he might he might win a Grammy. He might he might continue doing this as uh, going on tour as a flute player. I know they've there been some videos that uh they have uh, uh showed him playing like in um New York City and yeah. uh, uh just on the street, just like random. Japan, I'm like, man, if I yeah, just, just random places, bro. Man, and, he, and he's very humble. He's very, very humble. Like it shows him like just interacting with people, like just a random street performer. And I'm like, man, if I was a fly on the wall, man, and looked up to see Andre 3000, I will be like, man, I want to learn how to play the flute now. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what, though? I mean, uh, for real, for real, man, Outkast has been doing that since the beginning. You know what I'm mm, saying? Like, when they came mm. out with music, when Outkast came out with music back in, 
I don't remember when their first album was, man. We talking about AT Aliens, which was 19. When did that come out? That came out 96. I think wow. it might have been their debut album, maybe. I think I, I don't. I was at the that. good tender age of one years old during that. That's year. what I'm saying, bro. Like 96. <laughs> I was only a freshman in high school. Right. So, <laughs> you know, but when they when they came out with 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 that music bro it was like stuff we ain't never heard of like we we were mm. like yo what kind of sound is this like what where are they going like you know what i mean like they, they almost took you i remember i remember listening to albums from outcast and thinking like i was in a spaceship somewhere mm. else like mm. that's what they did well they've and always so oh no what were you saying my bad go ahead go ahead I was just gonna say, like Outcast. When I first started listening to Outcast, there was all their music was always the feel good music that you knew Outcast was getting played at a cookout or at some For family sure. gathering. Like there was, it was always clean, you know, hip hop, right? Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm a lover of all music, right? All genres, right? Whatever I'm feeling, I'm gonna listen to this and that. But I will say, like, I'm always. I'm always an advocate for anything that can help uplift the community, anything that can always spread positivity to the community, to youth. I feel like our, our like young people, their public figures are musicians, performers, right? Rappers. And it's like, okay, if they do something stupid or if they, if they represent themselves in a wrong way, the youth is going to follow. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that, Andre 3000 came out with this album because I remember when I was in high school and I took um I like um uh uh I was playing an instrument for like a I took band for like an elective. I didn't take it seriously. I didn't I didn't I'm like no, nah, I'm not. No. This is for geeks. I'm not going to learn how to play the sax. Get out of here. I yeah. I had I played the sax and I played the trumpet. I was awful at both of them. But I had to get that like <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like the older I get I'm like, "Damn, I wish I learned how to play it." Cuz when I was at um uh, Roberta's a uh, uh, listening party. No, watch yeah. the the watch party. Yeah, it was a watch party, and I saw your daughter playing. The first of all, y'all, Nick's kids are extremely talented, right? Like I'm, I'm just, I'm a grown man. I'm like, I'm jealous of these kids right now. Uh-huh. This girl was playing this <laughs> piano like Beethoven. I'm like, how old is she? You're like, oh yeah, she nine. Nah, she does it every day. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> you know, I used to play. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm just not learning how to whistle. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, my yeah, t- yeah. I'm just not learning how to whistle. So it's just, it's, it's very, I think things, well, a person like Andre 3000, I think is really what the community needs, right? It's just, we always need that one person that, you know, what can we do to help change the narrative? What can we do to help uplift, you know, our people? And the fact that he's playing an a flute okay the flute was like the least popular instrument to play it was always the guitar the piano or like the sax maybe yeah but he's playing like a dope flute though he ain't playing like a little recorder like you (laughs) 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 he's playing like a dope flute people are like you look at that flute like i seen the video of him walking around in like japan like you could probably hurt somebody with that flute like if somebody ran up on you you could hurt them with that flute right so (laughs) it's at least it ain't like a corny you know like it's like a dope flute he got going on this so, man got swag know. with a flute this man swag with a flute bro swag That's with it. a flute man because you know be- i think i think he did in our generation that i think is important especially for uh, like you said the young folks a lot of times like a lot of people are putting out music thinking that they have to put out like what they think people are going to want to hear and that's not true to their nature and who or what they really want to put out mm-hmm Andre showed us, look, as an artist, I am allowed to put out what I want to put out. Mm, I'm not going to let mm. I'm not going to let like culture. I mean, think about how brave he and think about how much risk it took to say, I'm going to put together this album and I'm going to release it to the whole entire. He knew he was going to get this feedback. Mm-hmm, he knew people mm-hmm. were going to be like, yo, you didn't rap not one word on it. Andre said, you know what, in a world that wants to like shame everybody because we ain't following everybody else and we're not doing like what everybody else is doing. I'm going to be a guy that says, you know what, I'm going to put out what my heart is led me to put out. And I was hoping that that's going to inspire young folks to be like, well, damn, like I don't want to have to like rap about shooting up people. I ain't never shot a gun before. <laughs> so why am I rapping about shooting? Like, I don't want to well, do that no more. And, you know? and, that's, and that's not what the people want to hear, though, Nick. That's what the corporate 
uh, higher it. uppers want them to put yeah. out because that and and that's and that's another conversation that you know and I'll even love to you know have uh, Roberta on and have some other friends that have that are artists that are you yeah. know might have been under labels or independent artists like there's corporate wigs that are big on hey we want to we want to market you as this person we want to continue to market this because this is where the money's at right we yeah. you might be a a jazz artist but we're going to turn you into a pop artist because pop yeah. is where the money's at and that still exists i mean it is it's it's a reason why you see like again and i'll go back to i'll go back to hip-hop just you know for the sake of you know we're talking about andre 3000 like you have artists that are like okay what's different from him compared to this one like you got about fifty thousand lils. You got about twenty five babies. You got yeah. I mean, I'm all, I'm saying, all the, you, yeah. got, you got young this, young that, young this, yo this, yo. like it's it's so many of the same name, and they literally have the same genre and say you know it's like what what makes what's different from you? What's different? But hey, that genre sh- it sells it sells arenas. Um, it's a again they. They're gonna say, okay, whatever makes us money is all that matters. You might sing sound like this, but we're gonna hook you up to this song because this sounds better and this is what makes you money. So I think Andre pissed off a lot of corporate executives more than just um, you know, more than just his fans. Like his fans was just they gonna support him regardless. Yeah. But um yeah. I think he pissed off a lot of corporate execs with you know bringing out this album. And I think he he's at a point in his career where he could do that. Yeah, right. Cause he yeah. already won, bro. I mean, Andre, come on, like. I feel like Outkast probably top ten duo rap duos. Like you, mm-hmm. you ain't gonna get like their contrast of what they brought to music. I mean, Big Boy and and Out- Outkast was always out there. Big Boy yep. was more you know street, but they brought like that good balance. And and he's already won. He already yeah. won, bro. He already yeah. he's already been successful. Um, he's already he's already proved to us time and time again that if he wants. Like I went back to just saying, like scientists and engineers, I think best rap song of 2023, my wow. personal opinion. Um, but he came out on that. And I mean, like, you know, you think about it, you're like, what else does he have to prove at this point? He only got nothing to prove. Now he just wants to make music. That's you true. know, and, and I That's think true. I think uh and then and then even you know, talking about it, I was reading it somewhere where they were talking about how all these people are gonna start sampling it. Lupe Fiasco. Drop, he said he's already used one of the songs and sampled it already. So looking at the bigger picture, even when we're going on the money, guess mm-hmm. what? Five years down the road, all these rappers are like, dang, you know what? Andre was up to something with this flute, dog. <laughs> and then who they gonna have to call? They got to be like, yo, Andre, can I get can I sample this? And Andre's like, Hey, remember in 2023, y'all was clowning me about not rapping. And now you want to rap over all of my, you know, like so. Who's my really flute is in that? the Smithsonian right now. I just want to let you know. <laughs> it's exactly. in the Smithsonian, <laughs> right? And then who's and I, I would probably even bet that mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if this album wins some type of some type of awards, some type of things that we did not expect it to to do because he it, it was just true to what he wanted to do man. i think i think andre and, and uh, uh i think andre is going to be the reason why <laughs> at the grammys they're going to have a flute category televised because they got I'm a lot of you. categories that's not televised i'm telling you bro yo you're going to see people showing up with freaking flutes right next, you know right next to the song like, of the year is going to be flute album of the year <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I guarantee that's it, you. I guarantee you. That's the, that's gonna be televised because that's another thing, man. The Grammys is wrong. They first of all, I don't see no gospel artist televised no more. I don't uh, see no gospel like you know they got their they, again. It's taken over from hip hop, pop. Um, do they even have? They might got a little. They do a little bit of country. They a do little a little bit country, of country. Yeah, on yeah, on the Grammys. Country, yeah. But um, uh, but they. I mean, you know, a lot of. It's just the 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 industry, man. They're biased for certain genres, and um, yeah, they're they're biased, man. They're biased. That's all I can say. But man, Nick, Nick man, I always appreciate you taking the time out your busy schedule, chatting up with your boy here on the pod, uh, ladies yeah. and gents. I hope you enjoyed this great conversation I had with my dear friend and brother, uh, Mr. Nick Hammond Walters, host of Life Recreated Podcast. Nick, how can people continue to tune in uh, to your to your show? And uh, just stay up to date with uh, stuff you have going on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Definitely tap in, man. We are on all streaming platforms. Um, you know, obviously Apple, 
uh, Spotify, all those good d- different things. And then you can check the website, liferecreated360.com. Um, that has, you know, ways and links to, to, to get on that as well. Um, and, and just, you know, just, just being there on YouTube as well too. So, um, anywhere you can listen, we, we, we're there. Bet, bet, bet. Well, look, Nick, don't go anywhere. Cause, uh, y'all Nick and I, we're going to chop it up a little bit later. Uh, after this show but again thank you so much for tuning into the Aaron Gavin podcast you know coming with you with new episodes every Monday Wednesday and Fridays 10 a.m eastern standard time uh, via podcast so wherever you uh, listen to your podcast you can tune into the Aaron Gavin podcast all you have to do is just type in our smooth club media again our smooth club media regardless of whichever uh, platform podcast platform that you're on uh, you can also check us out uh, our visuals uh, at 1 p.m uh, Eastern Standard Time via YouTube. Our YouTube channel is Our Smooth Club Media. Again, that's Our Smooth Club Media. All of our socials are Our Smooth Club Media. Um, tune into my weekly radio show, uh, In Your City, hosted by myself, along with my good friends, comedian Rock Fox and Hustle Queen Miss Michelle Young, every Sunday at 12 p.m. on WNSB Hot 91.1 FM, the soul of EA. Uh, what else do I have going on, y'all? Um, continue to support Rugged Evolution Beard Care. It's an awesome a brand all you have to do is go to their website ruggedevo.com it is the holiday season so hey give your uh your uh a bearded friend or a husband or a brother or cousin you name it hey bless them with some great beard care products uh what else what else i know i have some more stuff um oh yeah guys um i'm thrilled because later in the next like i think week or two your boy will be receiving a uh major award i'm honored to say i'll be receiving the uh, uh, Entrepreneur of the Year uh, from Black Men Rock Image Awards uh, coming up uh, later in uh, the in the month of December, later uh, later in the month. And um, I'm just so honored, man. Uh, hard work pays off. But again, I'm still a student, so the best is yet to come. But I'm uh, truly, truly honored to be receiving this um, but to be receiving this honor. Um, also, uh, later this week, um, our Smooth Club is nominated for best podcast of the year by the Blendsville Awards, the 2023 Blendsville Award. A- another honor that I'm just, I can't believe it. Uh, In Your City is continuing to uh, uh, grow. As you know, our Smooth Club podcast had rebranded to our Smooth Club presents In Your City. And uh, In Your City is the current uh, radio show that I do as well as podcast. So um, we're just continuing to grow and bring great content to um you know to you the listeners and the viewers uh so very excited this year is going to be ending off pretty pretty good but a lot of stuff happening um again tune in to the Aaron Tegan podcast continue to support 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 i will see you all on friday here on the Arrington Gavin podcast later <laughs>